What's going on guys and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to do a quick little modification to your W204 in order to help lift the appearance of the car. Now, I know that this may not be for everyone, so if it's not for you, then by all means, just you know, move along, switch to another channel or fast forward, whatever it is, or check out another video. If it is, I'll be sure to leave a link in the description below. Be sure to check it out if you're interested in getting something like this. What I'm talking about is a light up written logo. It is a Mercedes-Benz light up logo. And this sits in your front grille, as you can see in the photo right now. And personally, I think that it just helps to make the car stand out, by keeping it unique above all, but not too much, still in a very subtle way. Just to show you exactly what you get in the box, you get the symbol itself. It's already connected to a positive and negative wire. And you also get two brackets and two push-on retainer clips. And that's it. That's how easy this modification is going to be. Now, when it comes to installing this, you do not have to remove the grill from the car. The only reason why I have removed the grill is so that I can show you up close how you would mount it and how it would sit. That way you get a clear picture and a clear idea of exactly what you need to do in order to get this to work. First thing you wanna do is figure out exactly where you want your logo. I've decided to install it on this side because that's where I'm going to tap into my current angel eyes so that I don't have to go all the way to the fuse box. If you already have something like a light up LED star, then this installment will be very easy because all you have to do then is just tap into that power source. But if you don't have anything, I'll show you how to uh, use a fuse tap and then tap into your fuse box. That will probably be the best way. Unless you're comfortable with tapping into your headlights or your parking lights, something like that, then by all means, you can do that. Either way, it will work as long as you get 12 volt switched power to your light source. Now that I know exactly where I want it, all I have to do now is push on these two clips. And then once you have your bracket on, then just push on your retaining clip. So just to show you exactly how it goes on, this is the back of it right now. As you can see, you just simply put on the bracket and then push on the retaining clip. Put your bracket on with your push on retaining washer. You simply just push it over the top until it is seated and it is nice and tight. And then it's just a matter of lining it up exactly how you want it. And as you can see, that's not going anywhere. If you have a grill like this that does not hide the brackets very well, it really isn't for me to put it this way. So I've decided to install it another way. I'm only going to use one of these brackets. And what I do is I turn it horizontal and I use it in a way that makes it really tight but at the same time it hides the ugliness of the bracket because honestly the brackets do look kind of fugly if you think about it my grill fin is actually really thick i have a little bit of trouble getting it on but if your fin is a lot thinner then you're not going to have a problem getting it on whatsoever i'm going to put this heat, heat shrink over the top of the cables and i'm just going to melt that on and then we will continue from there get a piece of heat shrink put it over the top make sure it's long enough that it covers the the cable but you also want a little bit exposed at the back so that you can use uh, whatever it is you're going to use in order to tap into your 12 volt switch power source. You can use a heat gun or you can just use a lighter, it's totally up to you. Now we're just going to melt it on. Make sure you cover the cable, as much of the cable that you want. Okay, I'm gonna try and get it in here a little bit. Okay, so now we're just going to melt it on real quick. Okay, not both sides. Okay, we're going to melt it on. You can tell when it um, has shrunk and, and uh, covered the cable. Don't forget to give yourself enough cable room so that you can still strip your wires and uh, use whatever it is you're going to use to tap into whatever power source you're going to use as well. 
in order to slip this on push in one side first and then simply bend it a little bit and get the other side in just like that notice how it's in at the moment then you just turn it and line it up where you want it so you push it in and once it's in you turn it sideways and that's it you want to keep it horizontal and then it will end up looking like this so as you can see when you look at it from the front you don't see any of the brackets okay now if I was to turn this vertical you notice how you can see the mount you don't want that because that doesn't look very nice at all you want to try and make it look as clean as possible so that it looks like it belongs there now I'm just going to install it on my side and then we will run the cable and hook it up so now we want this cable to be tucked away and hidden and then look for an entrance where I can get it into the engine bay all right there we go through and I'll show you guys what I mean in just a second but when it comes to routing your cable there are a few ways you can do this and the easiest way I have found to do this is to simply just keep it behind your logo and then either at the same level as your mercedes-benz symbol or follow one of your grill fins so that it is hiding and you don't see the wires or you could drop it lower keep it behind one of your fins and then go along the bottom that way you do not see the cable at all when it comes to getting it through to your engine bay just look for a little slit because the wire is so thin you can simply just push it through a little gap and it'll come out to your engine bay and then from there it's just a matter of guiding it and routing it to your fuse box which is right here for americans who may have the fuse box on the other side same principle you just have to go through a gap here and go into your engine bay and find a route to your fuse box what's more important is where you're going to get your 12 volt switch power from and how you're going to tap into it. When I pushed it through that little gap, it just simply came out to here. And now all I'm going to do is simply tap into my current positive and negative for my angel eyes. I will show you guys exactly how you use these T-taps just so you have an idea of how easy it is to use and um, it will save you from having to solder if you're very new to it. Now, if you do not have any power source to tap into, you're going to have to go straight to your fuse box right here. And I do have a video showing you how to use a fuse tap. Basically, all you're doing is instead of tapping into a wire, you are going to connect that wire to your fuse tap. And on the end of your fuse tap is just crimps. So you simply connect your positive to your fuse tap and then that is your positive you now have your positive so all you have to do from there is ground your negative to a grounding point of the car personally i like to use grounding points that they have used as well either just here or here depending how long you want to extend your cable and then simply tap into fuse number 36 now when it comes to tapping into fuses or when it comes to piggybacking off fuses always make sure that you are using a fuse that isn't related to anything uh, critical and electronic such as airbags and uh, brake sensors and things like that and that's basically it guys and you want to use a 12 volt switch power source because you do not want this running all the time you only want to have it running when your car is running that way it does not drain any power at all that is the point of using a 12 volt switch power source that's what i meant by making sure you have enough cable so that it can plug into where you need it to go split the cable so i have about 10 mil on each side or maybe 15 mil even because i'm using t-taps all i have to do is twist these wires together and plug them into where i need them this is what i will be using these are called t-taps Go with your color codes. Blue will be for negative, red is always positive. When you go to put it on, it is in the center of where this blade is because that's what cuts into it so that it touches the wire and you make a connection. Sometimes if your wire is too thick, you kind of have to help it out and strip a little bit of the wire so that it connects directly to the cable. And then you simply close it up and it has a little tab over the top here. Once I push this on, it clips on. Now it is securely on. 
So if we open it up now, we can see that it cuts into the wire. Now if I take the blade off, it exposes some of the wire so that it makes a secure connection. All we do now is crimp it onto what we need to connect, such as the positive of our light source. All you have to do from there, push in your insulated blade in the other side and it will make a secure connection directly to it. If you look inside here, you can see there is a little gap in there where the cable is supposed to sit. So when you push your cable in, you're gonna make sure you get it in that ring so that it can crimp onto the cable. We grab our cable, we push it in, and then crimp it down nice and tight. As you can see, it doesn't come off now. You do the same to the other one and you're good to go. Just to show you, how it all goes together all you have to do now is push in your blade through here and it will make a connection now when you push in your blade make sure that you do get it in do not do not install your blade so it can be seen on the outside like that if it's like that obviously it's not making a connection so you want to ensure that your blade sits inside the t-tap and makes a good connection like that as you can see it sits inside the t-tap that's how you use T-taps and that's how you tap into a wire. This is the connection for my uh, light up emblem. I've tapped into both of them already, positive and negative. So now I'm just going to install my wires. Now we'll give it a quick test run and make sure everything works. And once you're done, peel off the plastic. Beautiful. A Mercedes-Benz symbol that helps to lift the appearance of your car. If you don't have a power source to tap into, such as a LED light up star or angel eyes or any other light source for that matter, you can tap into your headlights or even your parking lights. However, that is something that I don't recommend you do unless you absolutely have to. Honestly, I would prefer to tap into your fuse box rather than having to tap into any factory wires. Don't get me wrong, you can tap into your factory wires if you really want to. That is not a problem at all. Just make sure that you use a solder connection rather than just T-taps because soldering is a permanent reliable connection whereas T-taps can get loose over time therefore cause a inconsistent connection therefore throwing error codes. You can use T-taps just be warned that further down the line you may have to switch them up or you may have to redo them because they may get loose or they may not. You know, you may be lucky and they just stay exactly the way they are and that's fine. Now, like I said, I do have a video showing how to use a fuse tap. Check out that video on how to install a dash cam. And in that video, I briefly explain how you would use a fuse tap. And that brings us to the end of the video. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And as always, please like, share, comment, subscribe. Ring that notification bell in order to keep up with the uploads. Until next time guys, this is Mike with Mikey's Vlogs, signing off. I'll see you in the next one.